Welcome, friends in Christ, to worship here at Our Shepherd Lutheran Church in Avon. I am Pastor Matt, and we're going to continue our theme of Keep Me This Day, specifically focusing on forgiveness. And I want to just remind all of you out there that are watching uh, this service, yes, we have started in-person worship, but we want to remind you uh, that this is just as important for you, those of you who still can't come in person yet to uh, this, this, this building, uh, we want to make sure that you continue to receive the Word because it is the Word that you need, that we need. Um, and so until that day in which you can come join us, I pray that this is a blessing to you at your house that you may receive the Word and be strengthened in faith. Let us continue with the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our opening hymn. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept the record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, in word, and in deed and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you, and it is for his sake that he has forgiven you all of your sins. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of the word and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us pray. O King of glory, Lord of hosts, uplifted in triumph far above all heavens, leave us not without consolation, but send us the Spirit of truth, whom you promised from the Father. For you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for today comes from 2 Samuel chapter 9. And David said, Is there still anyone left of the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now there was a servant of the house of Saul, whose name was Ziba, and they called him to David. And the king said to him, Are you Ziba? And he said, I am your servant. And the king said, Is there still uh, not someone of the house of Saul, that I may show the kindness of God to him? Ziba said to the king, There is still a son of Jonathan. He is crippled in his feet. The king said to him, Where is he? And Ziba said to the king, He is in the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, at Lodabar. Then King David was sent and brought him from the house of Machir, and the son of Amiel to Lodabar. And Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, son of Saul, came to David and fell on his face and paid homage. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold, I am your servant. David said to him, Do not fear, for I will show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. And I will restore to you all the land of Saul, your father, and you shall eat at my table always. And he paid homage and said, What is your servant that you should show regard for a dead dog such as I? Then the king called Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, All that belonged to Saul and to all his house I have given to your master's grandson. And you and your sons and your servants shall till the land for him and shall bring in the produce that your master's grandson may have bread to eat. But Mephibosheth, your master's grandson, shall always eat at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then Ziba said to the king, According to all that my lord the king commands his servant, so will your servant do. So Mephibosheth ate at David's table, like one of the king's sons. And Mephibosheth had a young son, whose name was Micah. And all who lived at Ziba's house came uh, became Mehib- Mehibosheth's servants. So Mehibosheth lived in Jerusalem, for he ate always at the king's table. Now he was lame in both his feet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with our epistle reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Now if anyone has caused pain, he has caused it not to me, but in some measure, not to put it too severely, to all of you. For such a one, this punishment by the majority is enough. So you should rather turn to forgive and comfort him, or he may be overwhelmed with excessive sorrow. So I beg you to reaffirm your love for him. For this is why I wrote, that I might test you and know whether you are obedient in everything. Anyone whom you forgive, I also forgive. Indeed, what I have forgiven, if I have forgiven anything, has been for the sake in the presence of Christ, so that we would not be outwitted by Satan. For we are not ignorant of his designs. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by the Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. Then Peter came up and said to them, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him ten thousand talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him into prison until he should pay the debt. When this fellow servant saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then the master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should you not have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hello, friends. It's time for the children's message. So if you want to come up towards the TV so you can see me better and to make sure you can hear, uh, that would be great to do that right now. As we read, there was a master who owned many servants, and one of his servants owed him some money, right? And that was something uh, that he had to pay back. So the master was like, give me the money now or I'm taking your family. How would you like it if someone took your family? That would be horrible, right? It would be sad. So he got on his knees and he cried, said, please, 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 don't take my family, please forgive me. And so the master, being filled with um, mercy for this person, said, fine, I, I forgive you your debt. I release you from your obligation. And, and he was filled with joy and he, and he ran off. Well, then we also hear another story of uh, a master who did not forgive someone of their debt. Instead, they threw him in prison. That's very sad. So, which person, which master made the better choice? Was it the one that forgave the debt? Or was it the one who was angry and threw him in the jail? And I think we probably all kind of know the answer, right? The one who forgave uh, that debt. Friends, I want us to remember that that's kind of like when people hurt our feelings, or maybe they push us down, or maybe they uh, are mean to us in some way with words. You know, there's lots of ways that sometimes people can hurt us, but God has called us to be people of forgiveness. So if a friend ever hurts you or makes you sad and you're angry, Remember what God wants you to do, to forgive them. And that way they 
see Jesus in you. Always remember that God forgives you all of your sins, and he wants you to share that great news and that, that great gift of forgiveness with all those around you. Will you pray with me? Please fold your hands and repeat after me. Say, Dear Jesus, I thank you for forgiving all my sins. Give me strength to forgive others when they hurt me so that I can be a great example of the forgiveness you show me. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Grace and peace be to you from God our Heavenly Father, a Father of forgiveness. Amen. Friends in Christ, we read from our text today from Matthew 18. We hear a, a, a parable of the unforgiving servant. And of course, this is an example of what the kingdom of God is like. And we see that the, the, the master in this story has a servant who owes him a ton of money. I, you know, I'm, I'm saying this in so many words, right? Kind of recapping. And, and the servant is going to have his, his, even his family sold to cover this charge. And so he pleads with the master, please don't, please don't. And the answer that he is given is, and out of pity for him, the master of the servant released him and forgave him his debt. So he released him and forgave him of his debt. Of course, then he went and he tried to make one of his servants pay him back, threw him in jail. And once the master found out about that, he was very upset. And he came, went back to that master that he had forgiven the debt and threw him in jail. <laughs> so you see this, this very complex story of forgiveness and what it means. How does it affect people? And I think we, we, we really need to kind of step back and say, okay, I, th I think this parable is really doing two things. It's teaching us about the vertical forgiveness but then when that forgiveness is given, is that just it? I think each and every one of you 
my friends, can relate with me when I say, when someone wrongs me, I can forgive them. But that doesn't take, that doesn't take away, away the emotions of, of, of anger sometimes right away. It, it, it takes a while. And, and so I want to refocus on this whole vertical and horizontal part of forgiveness. And, and here's, here's kind of how I, I think it works. So forgiveness is kind of like this steel pot, all right? When we forgive someone, it's not from our own power. It's not from our own self. It's from the Word of God, from the power of God coming out of us. So even if you're angry to red in the face, but you say, you know what? I forgive you. In the name of Jesus, I forgive you because of what he has done for me and what he has done for you. The forgiveness has been given. You see, God's forgiveness is not dependent on our emotions and nor is it held back by our biases. So, it, you know, it's, it's like this, this steel bowl. It's unbreakable. For, when forgiveness is given, it's given. And it's very interesting, in the Greek, forgiveness uh, means to cancel or to release. And that's exactly what in this parable happens. He forgives him his debt, and then what's he do? He is released. So there's definitely that relation between uh, the releasing of, of, of the sin and the debt. We, by the power of the Holy Spirit, release people from sins committed against us. And that is unbreakable. However, there's still that horizontal relationship aspect that we have to deal with. We can't just ignore it. This is what I would call it, more about the reconciliation process. And, and, I, and I wrote the exact definition down. It simply means to restore to a friendly state are a friendly, a relational state. Uh, that's interesting. That's, that's different than forgiveness. Uh, forgiveness is unbreakable, unmovable. It is given. It is from God. But sadly, uh, it, when we are a sinner and a saint and we struggle against things, sometimes we can harbor anger. And so if this represents a relationship, right, the forgiveness has been given, but what happens to the relationship? The relationship is broken. It's broken. How are you going to repair that? See, this, brothers and sisters, I think is what too often is ignored. Yes, you forgive them in the name of Jesus Christ. That power is not ours, but it's God working through us. And then we just forget about it, and we, and we harbor anger against uh, a neighbor. No, no, we must deal with that anger and restore that relationship. How is this done? As we read the parable, it's done with love. It's done rem reminding ourselves of forgiveness that is unmovable. We are reminded of the forgiveness given to us by, by God himself who died and rose again. We are reminded that it's not about me, but it's about loving my neighbor and those around me. So when a relationship is broken, the only one that can fix it is God through his word that reminds us of forgiveness, reminds us of love and what we are to do in these situations. I want to read to you uh, an extra text here from Luke chapter 24, verse 47. It says, and this is right after Jesus had, uh, right before he ascended, um, 
and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Behold, I'm sending you the gift of the Father. So they're reminded to proclaim forgiveness. You see, proclaim. Unmovable. We have been called to proclaim the forgiveness. But in reality, our, our, our relationships can still get broken. And it's through that forgiveness and the love and God's word that can mend that horizontal relationship by grace through faith because we are brothers and sisters in Christ. So we are reminded that yes, forgiveness given, that can't be taken away. But the reconciliation process that has to deal with that relationship, it may not ever look the same, but by God's grace, it can be rebuilt. This is a, a bowl that has been glued back together. It, it still is a bowl. And it works, except if you try to put water in it. <laughs> but it's still put back together. It is still united. So even if a relationship can be broken, it can still be united and brought back together with the love and the forgiveness of Jesus Christ and his word. Let us remember this always and not harbor anger and broken relationships that do us no good. Let us remember that God can rebuild us and that forgiveness hmm, that is always given by the power of God. And, of course, in the second coming, when we are all raised into the new creation, our relationships will be restored and firm and beautiful and unbreakable as well. Broken relationships like this will become this, perfected in Christ alone. So brothers and sisters, go in peace, remembering that the forgiveness can be given because that forgiveness is God's and it goes through us. But the relational aspect we must deal with that. How? With God's word. With one another. We are a body of Christ. Let us gather around God's word. Let us, let, let us gather around God's word. Let us gather around one another and remind ourselves of what's more important. Love, forgiveness, and unity. Go in peace. Serve our Lord in forgiveness and love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, friends in Christ, we do continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, we do collect our offering. And I would remind uh, our brothers and sisters that if you are uh, giving online, to please continue to do so at www.rshepherd.org. And if you're giving by envelopes, to, uh, if that's how you're comfortable uh, giving, please continue to do so. Your generosity leaves me as, as your pastor uh, just overwhelmed with, uh, with, with love and I am so at awe of what God is doing through you to make sure that the ministries here at Our Shepherd continue to thrive and that we continue to reach out to the community around us with the love of Christ. 
Thank you so much for your generosity. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children here on earth, and grant us your grace that your holy name may be honored and hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all sinners and those who are blinded and bound by the devil's schemes May they come to know Jesus Christ through us, your people, the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen us by your Spirit according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil, that our wills may be crucified daily and be aligned with yours. Father, we especially lift up to you names from our family here at Our Shepherd, and entrust them to you. We pray for Bob, Katie, Barb, Pat, Anna, T, Diane, Jeff, John, and Deb. Heavenly Father, we lift these names up to you and we pray that you would answer their prayers according to your good and gracious will. Father, we pray for those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Marion and Buddy. Please, Father, grant them the peace that's beyond understanding that only you can give by grace through faith. Father, we lift up to you all the persecuted Christians around the world who are fighting for the kingdom of God with their lives. Father, embolden their faith, strengthen them to never be afraid, but rather in all boldness, proclaim the kingdom until the end. We pray for all missionaries. We pray for all those who go out into this world, not knowing what may happen. Embolden them as well. Protect them and strengthen them by your word. We pray for all those who are imprisoned. Please, Father, may they have a chance to hear your word and to repent. Father, we pray for our active military especially for Dominic, Dylan, and Rex. Please protect them and bring them home safe, Father. And we especially lift up a special petition for all of our health care providers and civil servants that are on the front lines of this pandemic. We continually pray for them as they continually serve us with their talents and gifts given to them by you. Please, Father, continue to bless their efforts during this trying time. Father, we now take a moment of silence for you to hear the prayers of your people. Father, we give all these prayers unto you, trusting in your name and remembering thy will be done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us our daily bread. Preserve us from greed and selfish cares. Give us strength to remember it is better to serve our neighbor than self. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, lead us not into temptations from the evil one, but grant us strength to overcome them by faith and the word Please give us strength to continue to fight the good fight every day of our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you all and give you his peace. Amen. We continue with our closing hymn. Brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you for joining us for worship here at Our Shepherd. I pray that it was a blessing to you and your family. And as we are taught by our God through his word, may we always remember that forgiveness is from him, and may we go out and be that example of forgiveness to others so reconciliation can do its part. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Amen. <laughs>